This is Kitchen Party. Kitchen Party is brought to you each week by Bakespace.com, and you can visit the website for more information, recipes, and links to all of our past shows. At Bakespace.com, you'll also find our iPad app, Cookbook Cafe, that allows you and your organization to create and sell an e-cookbook containing all your family and favorite recipes. And now, here's founder and CEO of Bakespace.com, Babette Papai. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Yay. Another Thursday. Yay. Oh my gosh, it's towards the end of the year. I, do you guys all feel like you're winding down? Oh yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> is, is anyone depressed? <laughs> Less so this year than in the past. Uh, considering I had a life-threatening event back in October, I think I've sort of solved that whole thing about being depressed over the holidays. I'm not depressed at all. What do you mean? <laughs> You know, you know, I I noticed that our glasses, Jeff, Renee, and myself, are always clear. We always want to show like what we're drinking and like this is the real deal. And but empty. Doug, but Douglas always has a mug or something. It's like he's he's like you're not you're not transparent. That means he's got this, the good stuff in there. Well, no, if, if if you could see the logo, I don't know if you can even see the logo. Anyone who who went to Mizzou in Columbia, Missouri, would recognize this cup immediately. This is a cup from Harpo's, a a, a college bar. Nice. <laughs> that I, that, that I, I have one which from Shakespeare's Pizza too. That anyone who, who lives there would know <laughs> desperately well. Um, so that's this is my party cup, see. You know, we'll have to do a tailgating. We'll have to do a tailgating um, show where we bring all of our college stuff back, anything that we've saved. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, uh, tonight's show, I'm super excited. Uh, just so everyone can introduce themselves, my name is Babette Pepi. I'm the founder and CEO of Bakespace.com and CookbookCafe.com and TechMunch, the food blogger conference. Douglas, do you want to introduce yourself? I am Douglas E. Welch. I blog on all sorts of things, including food, gardening, careers, technology, and child rearing. No, maybe not child rearing. <laughs> <laughs> I do child rearing, but I don't really blog about it. Um, uh, you can find out everything you ever wanted to know about me at DouglasEWelch.com. And Jeff, my man, my, my bro. I, I like to drink. <laughs> Look, I'm Jeff Alp, I'm, the, I'm the food blogger at uh, TBO.com, and I also write about food occasionally for Tampa Tribune. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. And it's um, we're on the verge of a of, of a Mayan apocalypse, and I, I think we're all doing very well considering. <laughs> and that's the lovely and beautiful Renee Lynch, who every who just delights us every single week. Check is in the mail, girlfriend. Uh, I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. And uh, happy apocalypse, everyone. Woo! And Let's Renee is constantly, that. constantly wondering what she's doing here with these people. I can see the look on her face. <laughs> Not at all. Who, who are these guys? What are yeah. they doing? What Not at all. I wouldn't miss it. Before we bring Pamela on, who is our special guest for the night, um, let's talk about this, uh, like this apocalypse, this like end of the world thing. Are you guys doing anything tonight to celebrate? Yeah, we're drinking with you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really sorry for you. <laughs> that shows you how special you are and all the people who are joining us on Twitter, that this is the way we want to spend the end of the world with you guys. <laughs> you okay, know. I changed my mind. Can I go now? <laughs> <laughs> all I can say is a lot of people tomorrow are going to wake up with a heck of a Mayan hangover. That's all I can say. Yeah. And if you guys are watching at home, please use the Twitter hashtag Kitchen Party and tell us what you're doing to celebrate the end of the world. Um, and uh, before we begin, I wanted to say that uh, this show to me, I, I hope I'm not like the opposite of everyone because the show topic <laughs> is... Does feeding a man, well, not necessarily, when I say man, I mean like human, I mean your, your, your <laughs> lover, your significant other, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Um, but does, does, is getting to, to his heart really through his stomach? And that's like, you know, my mom has told me that from day one. My grandmother, it's like generations and generations, my mom was always like, learn to cook, learn to cook, learn to cook. Um, but do you guys think that that is the case? Do you guys, am I the only one who's like, I'm Absolutely. just Absolutely. Sure. The only thing that I can say is you got to be careful what you're hooking with that food. <laughs> <laughs> you may end up, you know, you may end up with someone. Perhaps it wasn't really worth making that meal for. Just to like, just, just saying. 
<laughs> That's Lovely. true. That's true. So, Douglas, are you saying you can actually cook someone to stay? Like, cook it, cook, cook for someone, and then they won't leave. Well, at least until dinner's over. Right. <laughs> 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 What, what what is your wife? Did she make you anything that was really special? Uh, see, it's reverse reverse psychology here. I'm the cook in the family. So um, uh, what I've told my 14-year-old son is there are two things you can do to attract a woman. One is learn to play guitar, and the second one is to cook. <laughs> because either one of those, as they say in Italy, it's all over, all over. I think that's excellent advice. Renee, what did you make? Well, then I'm going to get I'm going to get rid of my Corvette then because the Corvette <laughs> clearly isn't working. Corvette can have can can have alternative meetings. Yeah, you got to be careful with that one. Okay. I don't know, if, Jeff. For you, I think the Corvette would work. I think you okay. can stick with the Corvette. Not everyone else, but you can. Vroom vroom. <laughs> I um I was so nervous after meeting my husband. My then he wasn't even a boyfriend at the time and making dinner for him and just kind of feeling like I wanted to make something special for him. And I made a dish from my childhood that my father used to make. You know, I'm not sure what that says, but it was one of my father's favorite dishes or special dishes. It's a linguine with clam sauce. And it's just like tons of butter and garlic and linguine. And it seems like it worked. That that sounds pretty um, adventurous, though. <laughs> that can go fish, butter, and pasta. I'd be like, I'd be like on the, on the couch, like totally bloated. I'd smell. I'd be like, I smell. Kiss my garlicky breath. Right. <laughs> well, this was a, this was a super duper duper early date. I'm not even sure there was any kissing involved. So this was like it, it was okay. It worked. <laughs> Yes, what you're describing, Babette, is something you experienced all in the fifth or sixth year of marriage. I think it's like, oh, jeez. Ah, okay, yeah. Don't Who are forget, you again? I've been dating my boyfriend for 11 years. So I definitely have that feeling where I'm just like, oh, I ate so much pizza last night. I, I just, I can't even move. I can't even come over. I can't do anything. <laughs> and then you realize you're like, that's not that sexy. This is, this is what we've become. Yeah. Imagine, Babette, after 26 and a half years of marriage. Right. What's the secret, Douglas? Um, oh, what's the secret? Oh, geez. Um, separate bedrooms, separate bathrooms, separate cars. <laughs> no, you know, we're not like that. All. Mutual toleration, I wow. think, I think wow. it comes down to. You each have your little quirks. And it's okay. You, you just learn to deal with the quirks because 90% of the other stuff is fine. It's just those few things that really tick you off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to bring in our, get our, over this. We have to bring in our expert on the topic. Pamela, you I tell us We're just sitting here right. talking off the top of our heads. I mean, come on. Let's get someone who knows something about this stuff. Pamela, how's it going? Good. Good. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I... Uh... I hooked my guy in because I could cook. His first wife could not cook at all. He did all the cooking. Which <laughs> kind of a sad state of affairs, really. Um, yeah, I, we haven't been dating all that long. I mean, I went to his apartment and I, I made him stuffed shells, which is a really easy recipe. And I uh, had everything cleaned up when he got over, which I don't do now. And uh, so, you know, he comes in and he smells. He's, oh, my God, dinner smells great. Where'd you get it? What do you mean, where did I get it? I made it. He goes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what frozen dinner is this? Is this like Stouffer's? What is it? Oh, jeez. made this. He says, yeah, I get it. You put it in the oven, you made it. It's yours. I said, no. So I ended up dumping his trash out on his floor. <laughs> probably wasn't the smartest idea because back then, he was a real neat freak. And um, after he got over having a stroke, seeing all this garbage on his floor, he then realized that, wow, she actually like, made this thing, and it's good, it's edible, it's not macaroni and cheese out of a box, and it wasn't, you know, hamburger helper, so he pretty much told me that night that he would eventually wear me down and marry me, <laughs> and um, I laughed at him and told him he was a fool, and a long, long, long story later and several years in between, we've been married now 13 years. Those are some stuffed shells. Wow. <laughs> so we got you got to tweet that recipe. Pretty easy stuff. I actually think I got it off the back of the pasta box, but I'd been making it for years at that point, so you know, pretty simple stuff. But you know, 
But yeah, I mean, I still, I really, Excellent. all the single, all the single guys I know, you know, that's one of the first things they say. Oh God, if I could find a woman that could cook anything, anything, I'd be happy. Now, men, from what I've learned over the years, uh, really have just a few basic needs, air or some kind of booze, sex, and food. That's about it. Pretty basic. You know, it's not more complicated than that. I mean, you can go and you can take your stripper pole classes and you can go get your sexy lingerie and you can read the Kama Sutra and learn how to do all those weird positions and dislocate and break bones. <laughs> all the other girls are doing. If you can cook something, it seems to give you the light up in the dating world. <laughs> Is that, I got to hear from the two guys on the panel. Is that true? Well, if you can do the Kama Sutra while cooking, <laughs> then I think it helps. Um, or if you cook while you're wearing Victoria's Secret, that's definitely a bonus. Um, but it's not required. Uh, but you know, I I hear you know I hear lots of people, uh, you know, especially uh, you know guys in their twenties and stuff who they don't cook, their girlfriends don't cook, the girls they go out with don't cook, and I'm just wondering how are how are we how are we wooing each other now if we're not cooking, you know? Poetry? No, that wouldn't work either. <laughs> so group Pamela, on, group on. How, did the, how did the blog? How did you? Yeah, group on. How did you go from uh, from you know doing this uh, you know kind of wooing your husband to uh, to uh, to turning it into a blog? I um, found myself. I was uh, doing a lot of consulting work, and I found out when the uh, economy hit the skid, so did my clients. So I lost all my clients. And I've always cooked, so I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll just do, you know, I'll continue to cook, but maybe, you know, I'll do a blog and that'll keep me cooking more and we won't be going out to dinner a lot because we don't have the money to do it. And, um, you know, I'll do the blog and it'll kind of help boost up, you know, all my technical skills that I was doing anyway and learn some new ones and have some fun cooking. And I've uh, been feeding my husband extremely well. Um, because he no longer looks like that beautiful ab man on the top of my side. <laughs> Is that really your husband, Pamela? Um, no. He, at <laughs> one time, many, 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 many years ago looked like that. I haven't seen that look and I don't, it's an embarrassing amount of time. <laughs> but I think he did work really well and all the other boys on the street and, um, yeah, I think I've ruined a couple single men because I used to bring them all my extra goodies because they tend to eat a lot, and now they're dating these girls, and they're like, these girls don't cook. I don't have to tell you. So their girlfriends are reading my blog now, which is great for my traffic. <laughs> are you finding uh, that there are a lot of single women looking for tips um, who are among your the, your readers? Uh, my readers are about 50-50. I have uh, half men, half women. And they all are looking for advice to make things easier, make things taste better. Um, I also give relationship advice on my uh, my food blog. So a lot of them read it for that because it's pretty snarky stuff. I mean, I've been married 13 years, but God knows I'm not dead. So, you know, we kind of have fun with it. I have a lot more fun with my blog than most food bloggers because I don't wax poetic about cooking because it's hard and it generally sucks and a lot of times stuff doesn't turn out quite right. So, you know, kind the same trials and tribulations as everybody else. But I think my readers appreciate that because I don't sugarcoat it and say, oh, this is going to turn out wonderfully and if it doesn't, you're terrible and you're horrible and you're never going to succeed at anything, including finding that guy. So... I have guys, though, that actually print out recipes and flip them to their girlfriends. But I also have guys that take some of my recipes and cook them for their, their wives or girlfriends. So. I'm going to say, I want to see more men cooking out there. Hey, guys, I want to just give a couple shouts out to Twitter, the Twitterverse. The universe is, they're talking to us. Uh, we have a couple of folks I want to say hi to. I definitely want to say hi to at I Love Garrick. He's great. He's part of Social Media Club LA. Woo -woo. I want to say hi to Nancy Sus Susan. Uh, we also have at Cakewalker, without an E, uh, who's watching saying, I love Kitchen Party tonight. I'm baking my way to the hey, end Brooke. of the world. 
Hey, Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that is his name? Is his name Brooks? Yeah, but it's Cakewalker. You're totally right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. See, I know him as Brooks because he's a friend. Hey, Jeff, how do we say Melissa's name? Melissa, you nailed it. Melissa Taylor, and okay. it's uh, it's it's dessert chick. I finally said it right. No, I said like, it right. You know, I think what we need to do is we need to bring her. <laughs> I said, it, I think I said it right first. I think we need to bring her on for a show. She totally oh, I absolutely did. agree. She's a she's a, a a great person to have on a show anytime. She's hilarious and she makes awesome desserts. She's an honorary host already in my book. That's our that's our yeah. Please, you know that's that's pretty much the uh, the two biggest things you need. You need to make, be a great cook and you need to have a personality. <laughs> that's true. Wait, what'd you say? I said she makes desserts. I'd marry her. I don't bake. <laughs> <laughs> I cry. I'm just not very good at it. Like I suck at it. Frying's fiddly. I mean, the baking is fiddly because because it, it, it's actually more chemistry in some ways than than cooking. So yeah, I, Douglas, I'm, I'm right there with you. Did you just say that. fiddly? Fiddly. Is that a word? Jeez, oh, Pete's. Come on, don't make me bring out all my Ohioisms <laughs> in one diet. I, I, I warmed Pamela. I said, Douglas is, a, is an interesting character. <laughs> I said, we're oh. all drunks, but he's the normal one. <laughs> That's really not sick. I'm not going to have to drink to that one. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm, not the, oh, I'm not the one drinking out of my college mug. That's all i got to say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was a, my college mug. I said it was a college mug. Anyway, Babette, back hey, to you. I want to say that AppBug Enterprises is saying on Twitter, he says, I'm so spoiled, it's now hard for me to dine out. Nothing beats homemade cooking and baking with love and care. Aww. It reminds me of, like, For Water for Chocolate, the movie. Yeah. Did you see the tweet from so, Derek? He said that... That always that seemed to me to be a bad swap, but I don't know. What? <laughs> you mean awkward pause? This is uh, hello and welcome to awkward pause. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about for like water for chocolate? You mean yes. like where the sisters switch? Like I will trade you chocolate and I will trade you water. I I think that's a terrible a terrible trade, but that's just me. Okay, digression. Let's have a fun No, no, no. I think I saw a different movie. <laughs> he, he was making he was making a. A, a funny, and it didn't quite come off. It's okay. I didn't we'll say be... fiddly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, um, think of other more. terms. I use. Pamela. Um, so, if, if, if someone is supposed to be cooking to win someone's heart, uh, we've heard about your shells recipe. Uh, what would be the next one that you would pass on to folks for something that's not too hard to make that has a reasonable success factor and uh, and still tastes really good. Well, I, I come from Renee's camp. Italian cooking, most people can relate to, and they like it, and they'll overlook the garlic, the butter, the pasta, and, and the fish. Um, but my other go-to recipe um, that's simple is just a really easy bolognese sauce, which sounds way more complicated than it is to cook. Um, tomato sauce and meat over pasta. Um, that always works really well. And for my friends who cannot cook or have no idea how to cook, um, after I teach them how to boil water, which some of them I've had to do, um, it actually works out great for them. The ones that are a little bit more advanced, and uh, there's air quotes around that word, um, I have another recipe that I just call the panty dropper. The panty dropper. I really teach that one to my male friend. It has worked every single time. Um, the ladies end up spending at least part of the evening. It depends on what their motive, what the man's motivation is. If they want them all night, or if they just want them for a few hours. Um, but let me, let me, I'm, I'm preparing to write this down. Hold. Right. <laughs> this, this is the best kitchen party ever. Okay, <laughs> you, you can go ahead now. <laughs> We're all ready, right? We're all wait, 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 wait. What happens if she's not wearing panties? <laughs> Everything else comes off too. The panties are the okay, okay, okay. The panties are the panties are the last final frontier. It's that like the Star happened. Trek of sex. Okay. <laughs> Pamela, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably give her a shot of tequila, and you'd be good to go there. 
Um, who's, who, whose dog was that? Wife to, I'll call puts my wife to sleep. So I think, no, that would not work. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, now, the panty dropper is uh, Zinfandel braised short rib. Uh, served over cheesy polenta. Super easy. Throw it all in a pan. Cook it for several hours. The house smells great when they walk in. And you serve it up on the plate. It's kind of messy, so clothes get dirty. Oh, you have to be kind and offer to help them clean up. You know, it's just one thing after another. But it's a great dish. And Ooh, I'm, I'm hot just hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some time alone with your short ribs? <laughs> say, maybe I should have sent out some toys before this call. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love how Renee's blushing. <laughs> I like slinkies. Hey, you know, whatever works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys are ridiculous. You know, Pamela, how did your blog go from, like, conception? I'm going to get us back on track. And I also want to say, at C Recipe is also watching. Don't say Conception. And on, on Twitter saying, cooking for women is my main cell to score a date. Hmm. Very good. And Melissa says she'll come on anytime. Um, but Pamela, how did you go from how did you go from building the to blog to making it I mean now it's like it's a branded thing. It's not just like your diary on the web. It's not just some thoughts. I mean you have some you have some branding here and it's it's a it's a it's a real website. So, what what do you do? Do you write a lot, or how do you? Where, where are you going with it? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I uh, I mean, I've been doing three posts a week. Um, I I think one of the things that people really really like about it and why it's actually gained some traction is it's really not a diary. God, nobody wants to hear about my life. Seriously, I don't even want to hear about it. Um, the only one who wants to hear about it, it seems, is my mother, who tries to call me every single day. She lives in Cleveland, so, you know, what else is there to say about that? Um, but I have a lot of fun with it. I interact with the people that read my blog. Um, you know, people want feedback. You know, they write comments, and they want to hear back about them. I mean, even the people that criticize some of my photos, some of those have been really funny, and... I respond back because I'm not a photographer. I'm more of a cook than a photographer. But yeah, so it's it's actually my my blog is very real and like I said earlier, I don't wax poetic about anything. And I think people appreciate that because I don't try to make things sound, you know, way better than what they are. I mean I don't I'm not, you know, Debbie Downer on it, but you know, it's just real stuff and I use real language and I talk about real stupid things that my husband does, um, you know, and real real relationship advice that, you know, if, if you have really, really good friends and you ask them for relationship advice, advice, this is the stuff they would actually tell you instead of, oh, it's okay, and they'd be really nice to you like they normally are, but you really want them to be honest with you. That's the kind of stuff that I do on the site. So I think people like that, and it's fun. People come to my site for a laugh, and... So I appreciate that when people tell me that they laugh when they come to the site. But I think that's really how it's grown. And I do real recipes that anybody can make at home. They don't need special equipment. They don't need special ingredients. And it's real stuff that everybody would eat. How did you decide to make it a relationship blog as well? I'm not aware of any other food blog that also offers relationship advice. So it's a, you've kind of, in my book, you've cornered the, the niche on that. How did you decide to do that? Uh, because I really think that food and sex and, okay, relationships, if you want that term in there, really are intertwined. I mean, read, you know, we've got these food porn sites. Well, there's actually people porn sites, too, in case nobody's been on the Internet lately. Um, and, you know, so people get turned on by good food. They get turned on by eating, you know. They talk about people being emotional eaters. Well, I mean, there really is something to that. There's a lot of emotions behind food. 
I mean, look at how emotional people get when you start talking about, you know, GMO and chocolate and caramel and things like that. People just go crazy. And, you know, if you've read any of those Fifty Shades of Grey books or, you know, been alive for the last six months or year and a half, you know, you've heard about how they even intertwined a lot of food into that, into that writing. So the two are, I think, almost mutually exclusive. I mean, if Victoria's Secret put a cupcake bar inside their place, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> you might try to sell that idea to, to Victoria's Secret. That's a great one. I, mean, I, would, be, I would be the first to sign up. <laughs> ATM is a great idea, but you know what? It would be a much better deal if Sprinkle you know, teamed up with Victoria's Secret. And yeah, you guys, if you guys end up doing that, you can just cut me in for 10%. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I want ten percent too. And more guys would go in there because they'd be able to eat. Right. Well, more guys would go in if you had bacon. <laughs> hey, bacon cupcakes. Or beer. No, I think you're missing the point. <laughs> or or beer. Yes. Or beer. <laughs> no, if they had beer, they would be Hooters. So. Beer and <laughs> beer and comfy chairs. Just a just a place to sit in a Victoria's <laughs> Secrets would be nice, honestly. <laughs> Pamela, maybe you can also talk a little bit about how you um, you were able to leverage uh, the popularity of your blog and also your blog relationships in Southern California <laughs> for um, that charity cookbook um, after the tsunami. And those are the those are the pictures that people are seeing when uh, when you're talking when those gorgeous pictures pop up. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Ah, uh, you're too kind. Yes, my big claim to fame. My parents are so proud of me. I was making in the L.A. Times. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was um, the brainchild of Linda, Salty Seattle, up in Washington State. Um, and she and I were talking and uh, wanted to do something for charity. You know, we really, you know, were blown away by everything that had happened down there. And I just said, you know, what can we do? What can we do? And yeah, we do the food stuff, but, um, you know, Linda and I are a little kind of on the razor's edge of, I guess, pretty much everything. And um, very proud to be. And she says, well, you know, I've been thinking about doing this kind of getting naked for charity thing. What do you think? And when I found out I wasn't actually going to be earning much money from it, but it was all going to go to charity, I thought, well, that's not a bad idea. So what we did is um, a group of us got together, men and women, and we are all in various stages of undress in our photos. And we all did, we all picked an ingredient, mine is chocolate, if you can't tell by these pictures. And we all supplied a recipe that was based around the ingredient that we chose. And um, these are, my photographer took a lot of pictures, and then we had several to choose from to decide which, you know, which pictures we wanted in the book. Ultimately, we raised over $3,000 for the charity. It all went directly there. None of it went to any of us. And um, the charity was very happy to receive the money. We had a lot of fun doing the book um, because we were all trying to figure out how risk day we could get without going completely overboard. And um, I have to say that my parents have actually seen my pictures. I gave them one of the books, and they were not completely mortified. Um, the picture of me that you see in the middle is a cropped photo of the one that ultimately ended up in the book. I have not put that picture out there because it's a little more um, risque than probably should be out on the regular internet, although there is way wars out there. <laughs> not by me, but there is way wars out there. Um, oh, I was just Googling you, Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed something. <laughs> Yes, Renee. Yeah, um, Pamela, your your parents might not have been mortified, but I'll tell you who was mortified: the L.A. Times copy desk. Um, I wrote a post uh, on our the L.A. Times food blog, the Daily Dish blog, um, about Pamela's cookbook and the charity raising effort to let people know in the food community where they might be able to donate money for tsunami relief. And the copy desk, they did not know what to do with these photos. They it was one conversation after another of, but she's kind of naked, but you can't really see anything. Can we publish this? I mean, it was like 
hours of back and forth and back and forth between readers, rep, and copy editors, and this and that. And then finally, we published the photos. But there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of hand wringing about whether we were just going too far with those photos. But people liked it, obviously. I thought it was great on their part because you had also told me about the um, the other celebrity photo that didn't make it that was showing far less. So, yeah, that's right. I can't remember who was that celebrity. Do you remember that? Uh, it does. Yeah, um, we're referring to, um, uh, it was a, you know how PETA constantly does kind of very racy ads involving celebrities. I had, uh, before I interviewed Pamela for that post I mentioned, uh, I had written a post about one of these PETA celebrity photos and the post was killed because they didn't want to use the photo. So, goes to show you. So the moral of the story is it's awesome to have a blog where you can write anything <laughs> you want. <laughs> That's a lot of red tape. I know. <laughs> That's insane. Jeff, is that the same like you have at the, at the Tampa Tribune? Well, you know, the thing that always struck me, and I'm not speaking specifically to newspapers because I'll get fired, but um, I, it always struck me as really odd that we would have no problem showing six days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage about school shootings, but if you show a, too much of a thigh in a photo, people lose their minds, you know? Uh, we ha I can remember an extended um, discussion we had about running the cover of Nirvana's Nevermind too large on a page because of the baby swimming naked on the cover. So, yeah, I you know, newspapers are very much about the 1950s when it comes to that kind of stuff. You know, someone has to be. Right, I mean, right. I'm telling you <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, if she makes it in every rag, so... <laughs> Pamela, do you so have Pamela, any other? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go, go, go ahead, Lene. Do you have any other special projects coming up? I do. I have a big project that's rolling out uh, early part of next year. Um, it is food related, but it is not a food blog. You know, people are like stunned to learn that. Um, and hopefully, I will be able to talk more about that once things are a little more solidified with it. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of work. Um, but it's all good stuff. Um, may or may not be doing more nude photos to promote it. I don't know. The nude photos seem to, you know, do some stuff. But maybe next time I'll get somebody else to do it instead of me. I'm probably getting too old for that stuff. <laughs> well, that's that's very intriguing. You're going to have to keep us posted on uh, on what that project is and let us know what's going on. We'll definitely do that. Pamela, is there any food that you shouldn't feed a man? Um, yeah, I gotta say, unless you're in a really serious and committed relationship, cruciferous vegetables, stuff like cabbage, <laughs> Brussels sprouts, broccoli, those kind of things, probably not the best idea. Okay. And I'm guessing you might, people might be wondering why. <laughs> no. no, I don't know. <laughs> you said it so elegantly too. I was like, you mean fart? <laughs> it depends on what you're into, I guess. Do you think? Uh, do you to the to the other person, and the other person, you know, if you don't want them to spontaneously combust, yeah. Right. Do you think it's possible for people to uh, to be compatible if they are uh, incompatibly uh, incompatible food wise? Oh, that's a good one. But you know what? I do. In fact, I am going to invoke the name of uh, Mr. Garrick Chan that we talked about earlier. Uh, he he said on Twitter that uh, he ended up winning his wife because he could cook for her. I know because mm -hmm. he told us that she was a vegetarian. A strict vegetarian until she met Garrick. And she Ooh. was a longer vegetarian. Um, but I do think. Uh, There's hope for Babette yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hope for Babette. There's hope for Eric. You know, I, I see their pictures. Garrick, Garrick always has these uh, pictures where he's fishing. And I'm like, what? Like him and his, his well, now wife, they're basically holding up all these trout and crazy stuff. And I'm always like, Yuck! <laughs> I don't want to see any fish. But that's interesting that she was a vegetarian. Mm. Yeah. 
I think I think you can be you can still even be polar opposites with the whole likes and dislikes of food as long as you both have a good appreciation for food and you're willing to try new things. Like I'm not vegan. But every once in a while, I want to go. There's a great vegan restaurant by our house, and I want to go there. And my husband is way not vegan. But he likes to try new things. And through trying this restaurant, he found out that it was actually very, very good. And so occasionally, you know, we actually go eat there. So I think as long as both parties, you know, are open to compromise and willing to try new foods. Now, if you've got somebody that's not willing to try new foods, then... Mm, Probably not. Just stick to the one night stand or you know, booty calls. And you'll be good. I say you drop that guy. <laughs> it well, you know, there's that. But I mean, if the sex is good, leave him as a booty call. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, best kitchen party ever. <laughs> <laughs> Poor of that. You had no idea what you were getting into with this one. Did you? <laughs> no, we hey. we had we had a little idea. <laughs> You know, Next I week gotta, on Kitchen Party, don't Fifty do Shades of don't Bailey. Don't do this. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I was okay. thinking I did that, and I was like, I did? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell our audience um, how crazy this was. We we had a guest who couldn't make it this week. Uh, we're gonna have, we were going to have a wine show. And I went to a Social Media Club LA event this week, which was fabulous. It was like, meet the bloggers. There was a whole bunch of people who we knew there. And then I remember scrolling through the list of attendees, and I was like, oh, my man's, my man's belly.com. I was like, I know her, but it's like those people who you know, but you don't really know. You kind of just, you know you know them, and you know you know their work, but you've never actually met in person. That's why the web is so weird, and I'm sure you guys all agree. Um, but I, she was the only person who I said, Oh, I want to meet her when, when we go to this party. Garrick, the same guy, comes up to me. He's like, Babette. He's like, Pamela, I wanted to meet you. It's like both of us w like wanted to meet each other at the event, which was fabulous. It was so great. We started talking. We knew so many people, the same people in common. And I was like, hey, what are you doing Thursday? <laughs> I was like, I know you really don't know what you're signing up for. I know you don't have a webcam right now. I know. I can see you... it now. Come to the kitchen party. I'll, I'll cook dinner for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to a really weird place. <laughs> so it was just very cool that you said yes. So I was happy to bring you on. Yeah, it... And I, and then Renee knew you well. And I think it's such a great idea, the, the idea that, you know, cooking for our sweeties is always a, a something we, we sometimes forget that it's it's a special meal or we want to we want to do something nice and I know you're gonna say something Jeff what are you saying I'm not saying anything I uh, I just think it's it's amazing how a small gesture like making food even if you've been married for a long time that you you just a small gesture of making dinner during the week it, it relieves a lot of stress and and takes the pressure off and you know, I, I, I just I feel like they don't teach it in guy finishing school. You know, that's something that they could really uh, they could really do better on uh, in terms of relationship coaching to, to just, you know, make a batch of cookies. Even if they're bad, you get boyfriend points, you get husband points. Just do it, even if it's terrible. I, I have I have brainwashed my son. I have indoctrinated him so well. <laughs> he has been cooking since he could stand on a chair and stir the pot. So uh, hopefully he will he will make someone very happy someday because he yeah. can. Uh, he can actually cook quite well. I'm actually surprised. He, he <laughs> there was a point a few years ago where he said he came to me and he said, "Dad, I need you to go to the restaurant store. I need a new omelet pan." Oh, that's what you do. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess you need, we'll to, you need to teach him now how to like kill a bear with a knife or something. Okay, <laughs> not just to cleanse oh, his mouth. Oh, well, oh. he he can he can wail on people in battlefield uh, and okay. back ops. So so that you wins. Know, he kind of kind of has both sides there. Yeah, that wins. You mean not a real bear, right? No, fake bear. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> a, a cartoon bear. bear. Yeah. <laughs> it was, by the, it was a joke bear. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, it's pronounced bar, not bear. Okay. It's bar. Okay. Just I so you know. I would adopt that bear. I would make sure that bear would not be her harmed in any way. <laughs> I would bring that bear into my house. <laughs> like, it's a teddy <laughs> bear, okay? He's going to kill a teddy bear. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Uh, 
him how to like fight the crowds at the grocery store when they put turkeys on sale at Thanksgiving to be the first one in there to get the right size you guys need. There you go. No, of course not. We will only buy the finest free-range turkey at the local farm, to which we have hand-raised. <laughs> hey, that's an accent. Uh, people who watch Kitchen Party know that's your cue to drink. <laughs> that's your cue to drink. <laughs> oh, you know what we should do? We should totally have... We had a lot of accents tonight. <laughs> yes, we should we have did. a drink game on Kitchen Party. Whenever someone does something... But we Beth, have, have you not been paying attention? No! <laughs> she, she's been too busy drinking. This is the problem. Your pigtails are tied a little tight tonight. <laughs> not a real bear. Not a bear. <laughs> I tried something different tonight. What do you guys think? I was going to put awesome. them out like this. It looks awesome. <laughs> I think you would go great with a schoolgirl outfit, but that's just me, Babette. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, if my boyfriend, and I hope he's watching this right now, if he made me chocolate chip cookies... And I showed up at his house, and I could smell them when I walked in the door. I, he would burn those chocolate chip cookies. Like they, <laughs> He wouldn't even be able to turn the oven off. It would be so good. <laughs> Eric, if you're watching, hello, hello, hello. Are we still talking about cooking? or? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about cooking, but an entirely different type of cooking, I think, at this point. Yeah. I have often said I'm married to a Sicilian, so if I ever tick her off, I know that the one thing I can do is start frying up some onions and garlic. And uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I, can, I can be forgiven if I, if, if I turn that into something uh, useful. But that's definitely, you know, she smells that when she comes out and like, I'm home. <laughs> hey, I just Emily, get... What do you suggest oh. if somebody has screwed up and somebody's in the doghouse? What do you think they should make to earn their way back into someone's good graces? Well, chocolate chip cookies are always. I mean, those are like the universal food. I mean, they tell you if you're selling your house to bake chocolate chip cookies like a half hour before people start showing up. Sell your house. So, chocolate chip cookies are kind of a no-brainer. And I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm sure all of my other food blogger friends are going to poo-poo me, but whatever's from. Um... <laughs> If you're really in the doghouse and you're really trying to get out and you just don't have the time to, you know, make them from scratch, which of course we all know you should, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, even if you have to get the old store-bought slice and bake, bake them up. Even if you burn them, you know, like Babette says, you know, they'll smell them when they're walking up the walk, when they knock on the door and open the door. Nobody can be mad when they smell chocolate chip cookies baking. Nobody. It's impossible. And if they are, they're a zombie, throw them out because they're going to kill you. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, I love those kind of cheat things, too. Like, if there's a way to, you know, like, uh, if, if the experience is almost the same with, like, say you bought no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not condoning this to everyone. You can. You can make cookies by. You know, obviously from, from scratch, just as easily. But if you're in a pinch, it's nice to have a little pre-made cookie dough in the back of the refrigerator. Get it out. Do a couple of cookies before your your loved one gets home if they're mad at you, or if you spend a lot of money and you don't want to tell them. <laughs> I'm not confessing anything. <laughs> you, guys, you guys aren't even laughing. Your other terrible. alternative is just to no. not make them mad. <laughs> That's no fun. I wanted to bake, okay? I wanted to make you mad so I could bake. Is that all right for you? <laughs> she just wanted makeup dinner. That's what she wanted. <laughs> Two, three, four. Keep like chocolate chip cookie dough and like ripe dough in your freezer. The chocolate chip cookie dough, if you've got the frozen stuff and you really just want to, if you've got, you know, you know you screwed up. And you got to do something to like make it right when they come home. Just take a couple pieces of the dough and like throw it in a frying pan on top of the stove and cook it up. You get that aroma going. Good to go. If you really want to make it nice, you could also bake a loaf of bread. Just keep some stuff in the freezer and then take it out and yeah, you're good to go. If oh, you want to fire up the oven too, you can throw throw the cookies into the waffle iron. Actually, that's a quick way of making okay. cookies too. You got a waffle iron, yeah. 
Hey, I just want to tell you guys on Twitter, we have a couple people watching, a couple new people. Um, at I'm Stuff, Danielle, who's a good friend of ours, is watching, and she's like, better to drink at the kitchen pot it, no driving home afterwards. That's right. Woo, woo. Um, <laughs> so what is wrong with me today? <laughs> what is wrong with me? I am losing my mind. Um, and then Corianda says, kitchen party drinking game? She said, at Big Space, you know what you're getting into with a question mark. Yes. We know what we're getting into. <laughs> I'm I'm confident because we're all home that no matter what we drink, we'll be fine. And we do this once a week, so <laughs> technically, we're not alcoholics. <laughs> so. I think, can I get the scientific basis on this, please? Can I? I'm, I'm gonna, I need I need the studies and the citations and everything. Uh, yes, regularly scheduled alcohol intake does not indicate a behavior pattern at all. <laughs> Previ what, what, what do they say about stocks? Previous performance does not indicate future red returns, something like that. <laughs> hey, Pamela, how do you pick your blog posts? <laughs> oh, in the most scientific of ways. But of, but of course, we expect nothing less. Of course. Um, pretty much whatever I feel like eating. And kind of whatever is going on at our house and what I have around and... I kind of go based off of that. Um, I eat like I would think normal people eat. I don't eat really weird stuff. So um, I do some months I actually have an editorial calendar that I put together um, because I travel a lot. So the months when I'm traveling, I actually put together an editorial calendar of what's going up and when. But I'm normally more, um, let's call it organic than that. Um, kind of whatever the mood strikes me. You know, December, I make boatloads, boatloads of Christmas candy in December. I don't do the cookie thing. I do the candy because it's way easier to clean up. Um, so I do a lot of posts on candy. But um, normally, depending on, you know, what the time of the year is and what's going on um, and what we're eating around here, that's really kind of what I post. Um, I don't follow the trends of, oh, my God, everybody's baking, you know, stuff, cookie, brownie, slash cake. What do they call those? Um, the cake balls? Stuff pie. I don't do that um, because I won't eat that. So, you know, just kind of, you know, Thanksgiving was all the month of November. I just did a bunch of side dishes for people because that's what a lot of people really like to eat at Thanksgiving are all the side dishes. So. And I'm one of those people. So all my posts in November were side dishes. And then on Fridays, I generally do a drink post because, you know, it's the weekend and you got to get your drink on. So I do those. So that's kind of how I figure out what I'm going to post. You know, you mentioned during the party that you travel a lot too. What, where are some of, like, the sexiest food cities? <clears throat> mm, let's see. Um... Places that I've been, sexy food. I gotta say Monte Carlo. Probably more just for the overall atmosphere and it's a lot of seafood because it's right there on the coast and seafood is kind of sexy because, yes, I know the whole fish thing, but you know what? It's kind of slippery and it's really fresh and you feel all <laughs> right, so you don't feel like you're loaded down with a bunch of carbs and. Okay, sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> you lost me at slippery. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, my glass of wine is almost empty. So, um, let's see. So many other places, really sexy. Food. Have you been to Miami? I have been to Miami. It's been a while. I do now. I mostly do international travel. Um. So, um, a lot of my stuff. I gotta say, Italy was kind of nice, even with all the pasta, just because. Yeah, you know, it's Italy, so it's got that whole thing. And I spent I spent a whole day down on the Amalfi Coast and while I was staying in Rome, so I gotta say that was um pretty sexy for the overall atmosphere. The boys there, you know, some of them are really quite nice looking. Um and even though there's all that pasta there, you can you eat much, much smaller portions, not like what you eat here. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel all loaded down with stuff. And, of course, you know, good red wine, so you're a little drunk at the same time. Um, 
in South Africa, which most people would not say because of oh, things like malaria, among other things. Um, but they've got some unbelievably fantastic wines, so that kind of gets you in the mood for, you know, whatever. And it's um, their seasons are opposite of ours, so if you go down in our fall and winter, you're getting into their spring and summer, which are quite warm, and, you know, you got to wear shorts and T-shirts and bathing suits and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, those are kind of my three top three. For now, I mean, there's, you know, there's all the tropical locations, the Bahamas and Curacao and stuff, but those are kind of the obvious ones, so. What more? Tampa. <laughs> Tampa. Tampa. <laughs> yeah. That shining star of the southern American coast. Hey, hey been, we know how to seduce generals here, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. She cooked a nice chicken for him, and he fell over immediately. <laughs> You know, Jeff, speaking of Tampa, I just got a tweet, and I forgot who sent me the tweet, um, but they said that they were going to, what's the restaurant called, Wana Wana Mama? What's that restaurant called, where we went? No, not at no, all. No. The, one where, the <laughs> one where they only get enough Why food mama? for like that day. He denies all knowledge of said restaurant. It starts with a W. <laughs> Why Mama? Yes. Say, can you say it again? Why Mama? Why Mama? Someone tweeted saying that they were going to uh, Tampa. Why Mama? And they were, <laughs> they were going to eat there because they, they were, had been thinking about it since Tech Munch. Exactly. It's a great place. I was surprised. The food in Tampa, Dats, delicious. Yeah. She seems a little dubious about Tampa, Jeff. I'm just saying. Well, again, pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It all goes back to that. <laughs> look, look, up, look up the Florida tag on FARC, and I think that would explain it all, but we'll just let that one. You know, uh, we'll keep our delicious food. You guys can stay in California. That's right. Wait, wait, wait. Where Don't we have little, little tiny portions of food. Little tiny portions. Like I love how Renee is like an a... accent. That's an accent. <laughs> all, I know is, oh, all I know is Babette and her boyfriend went nuts for the grits creme brulee that was made at Y Mama that night, and they still talk about it. No, you you got me with the grits. You got me with the grits. I, grits I would, I, creme brulee? I would enjoy that. It was awesome. That was like the one of the best things I've ever had in my life. Like I actually stopped the chef and was like, I said, bring the chef out here right now. I felt like my father, my dad would do that. He'd be like, bring the chef out here right now. And I looked at him. I, I looked into the soles of his eyes. <laughs> Does that even make sense? I looked. The soles I, of his Okay. <laughs> You're mixing your We're metaphors. Not, you know, these we'll aren't spirits go. burning the Nazis in Indiana Jones, for God's sake. It was just dessert. I said, I love your creme brulee. It's delicious. <laughs> Seriously, he's it was like the best dialing, thing I've ever had. No, it was, he's like dialing 911 on his other hand going, you got a crazy <laughs> one. What was that? What, Wada Wada Mama Burger? What was that? Wada Wada? It is a hard name. Oh, not if you live in Florida. Right, so uh, that's the one thing, one of the things, not me, but one of the things I love about the South are the grits. Oh. These yeah. were like grits on steroids. These were these were not these were godly. These were oh. so delicious. Oh my god. Godly grits sounds like a recipe yeah. right there. Godly grits. I like In it. fact, I want them to ship me some <laughs> like for Christmas. Jeff, please. <laughs> so wait, was this a dessert? It's like creme brulee, but it, I need more. It was creme brulee, and they made it with. I'll show, I'll send you a photo of it. Uh, I uh, they made it with uh, with grits, and it was all. I, you know, I was pretty dubious at the beginning too, but then it came out and was absolutely perfectly made. Oh. And I thought, okay, well, this is this kind of sets the tone. What's that, Pamela? Pizza. Pamela, you cut out. I didn't hear you say that. Say that again. I need a photo of this as well. I will recreate this. This is one of the things I do with all the travel that we do internationally. I recreate a lot of the dishes that we have that we really like, or I recreate dishes off of menus that they're out of at the restaurants that we use sure. that I really like. I will well, I will, uh, I'll post it to Twitter after the, uh, after the kitchen party. That is awesome. Right. That is awesome. And then Renee and I will get in the car and we'll head to your house and then you'll make it for us. <laughs> we'll bring wine. That's awesome. And if anybody's watching, if you have photos of the dishes that you've uh, that you use to woo and to uh, be wooed, please tweet them at kitchen using the hashtag mm -hmm. Kitchen Party and let us know because we want to see it. Or or if you just want to show us what you're doing to celebrate the end of the world, 
That too. <laughs> that could result in some very interesting pictures. <laughs> they go you together. Like, you, you in no way reduce that down to you know pictures about food. So uh, just then use the hashtag Food Network. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying. I'd, some people get get a little crazy when the world's about to end. You know. That's true. That's true. That's true. I don't true. want to see any pictures that reference that uh, even come close to recreating the barfing pumpkin at Halloween. Oh! Yes, no, that, that's not, not appetizing. Not appetizing at all. Jeff, it looked like you just put on your headset for the first time. <laughs> Did I just see you go like My that? My 17-year-old son is in the other room oh. singing in fall set ring Christmas bells, and I thought, is that me, or is that, is that am I hearing Christmas voices? Or Are you going to bring Too him in? Uh, it's, it wasn't, uh, no, no, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> I love how you're like, yeah, sure, you'd throw him under the bus, but you wouldn't do that to our ears. <laughs> That's our prerogative as fathers. We Absolutely. Can under the bus, yes. Well, we have about five minutes left to the end of the show. I want to thank everyone on Twitter who's been following along. Everyone's been absolutely fabulous. It's been great to see some some familiar faces from every week and then some new faces as well. And uh, obviously we have a show next Thursday too. Um, we're, we're not sure what that topic is going to be yet, but we will keep you posted. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on uh, Google+. Plus. And uh, I want to make sure that Pamela has enough time to um, tell us uh, what she's working on or what we could be looking forward to or... What's happening in the coming year, Pamela? Well, I've, uh, I still got my man, my man's belly is still going strong. Um, so that'll still be up, so you can go there. And Twitter and Facebook are all at my man's belly, shame and plug. But uh, I will be working on a new project that will be launching early part of next year, first quarter. And I'll start posting more about that um, after the beginning of the year. I think it's something that everybody will really enjoy. It still involves recipes, but it's not a blog, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I've got a lot of places and people that are very interested in it and what's going on with it, and uh, it should be fun. Just well, we, 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 we think there's no such thing as a shameless plug, Pamela, so hopefully you'll keep us appraised of what you're up to and let us know, because we'd like to share that with people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And FYI, Jeff just posted the uh, grits creme brulee on Twitter with the hashtag kitchen party. So if you want to check that out, definitely do that. Delicious. So, um, Renee, before we before we leave, uh, what's what's happening with you in the 2013? Where are you going? What's happening? I don't know, but I'm telling you right now, this is going to be my year. I'm oh, sorry, I've already reserved copy? it. I, I've already reserved it. I'm sorry, 2013 is my year. I you paid know, my fee. I registered the domain. It's mine. I'm sorry. It, you know, I was I thinking that too, I but under, I was trying to support her. I want to yeah, finish. I had understood that 2013 was the year of the Jeff, but that's just me. <laughs> Only in Florida. Only in Florida. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say, Pamela? No, no, it's the year of the panties. The year of the panties, okay. <laughs> well, I think it's the year of the no panties, right? Right, right, right. Short ribs rule. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back I, and I watch the show. I'm making, I'm making a note of this again, just to remember. <laughs> yeah. See, Zinfandel I always like it when Victoria's Secret... Short ribs over polenta. See, that's, 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 right. When, when Victoria's Secret sends those mailers to the house and it says free panty, I always think of it like Mandela, and I'm like, yeah... <laughs> Don't incarcerate the panty. You know? Wait, 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 wait. Victoria's Secret sends you things that say you get a free panty? Well, not me to the house, you know. I mean, you know, they're mass mailing, and it says free panty. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know if panties were in jail, you know. I've never seen that. Current I'm kind of a little. I have no further comment at this time. <laughs> they only send it to carnivores. <laughs> See, that wasn't even funny. No one laughed. <laughs> just, I, I was still trying to process it myself. I was just, uh, okay. What about you, Jeff? What's happening in 2013? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'll be invited back to Kitchen Party. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got we, we to bring, 
to bring Kitchen Party and Tech Munch to Florida. We gotta we gotta have one in Florida next year. I think everybody would uh, would really turn out again. Hey, no, no, we we talked about Miami, and then if Miami yeah. doesn't work, we'll head back to Tampa. You think the Absolutely. people who came for the Tampa event will come down to Miami? Hmm, I don't know. It's kind of like the far? Hatfield and McCoys. Tampa doesn't officially recognize Miami, and Miami doesn't recognize Tampa. So, uh, I think there's enough of an audience in Miami, to be honest with you, that they're just dying to have an event like this, and I think it would be a huge success. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we run a food blogger conference that travels around the country. It's called Tech Munch. Jeff is our uh, uh, Florida producer, who is fabulous, fantastic. Renee, we should make you our LA producer because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> Do I get a crown or something or a cape? A scepter? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. then I'm in. <laughs> I'll have a big R put on the back of it with like, I'll bedazzle it. Oh, that's awesome. I'm in. <laughs> a little to come a little with a donkey Douglas. cowboy hat for Renee. <laughs> Actually, I do. I just want to let you know, um, Douglas. In case Renee or Jeff ever upset us. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> in case they ever make us mad. I have the most adorable photo in Austin of both of them with tiny, tiny little cowboy hats. <laughs> I, will, I will pay you whatever it takes for you to not show that photo of me. That is like the worst photo of me ever. Put that whatever in the want. burn bag. Whatever it's you kind want. Of, it's kind of like Pamela's photos here, except I'm fully clothed and I'm not attractive. <laughs> and wearing that a is, tiny little cowboy hat. You look adorable. <laughs> I look horrible. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you know, just just the other day, I was going through my old photos, and I found them, and I was going to send you guys an email with the photos, and just to, as a reminder, and be like, I love these pictures. Be, you know, one of the great the... things about being a fool is that there are worse material out there, and that you couldn't shame me if you tried. Beware the retribution that would rain down upon you. Bevet, just right. <laughs> right. lightning strikes from above. Pamela is like, what is going on here? <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, oh, I've got conference stuff just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tear people away from their familiar milieu, take them to a conference where they're imbibed with food and wine in huge and large amounts, and uh, turn them loose. Yeah, that, that doesn't result in any sort of bad behavior, does it? Oh, hey, Melise. Oh. Food. Usually at my conferences, it was just food. I have come to understand that all conferences are alcohol fueled. It's yeah. sort of like drag racing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Only the ones worth going to. <laughs> Only the ones worth going to. Oh, Jeff! Jeff kept us so fed that we got to the point where none of us could eat anymore. Like we were like, "That's it. We <laughs> there, no, not one more inch of food can be had." <laughs> I, I, I don't want to food. people. What can I say? I know the people <laughs> who make food. You treated us right. Um, right. Oh, and uh, Melissa says, "Not a fan of Miami." Oh. She says, "Tech mm. much." She pl she said, please. I'm gonna actually pretend that I'm her. I forgot how her voice sounds, but I'm just gonna. I'm going to. This is the theatrical uh, interpretation. <laughs> she says, please, for the love of God, put it to Tampa again. <laughs> Did that sound familiar, Jeff? Uh, not for a woman, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Julie is. It sounded just like Gary Busey having a seizure while impersonating Nick Nolte. <laughs> hey, hey, we just got at Julius who uh, checked in. He said that was the bomb. I remember it. He was talking about the creme brulee. Now, oh. uh, Julius has he goes everywhere and eats. So for for him to say that, I am I'm I'm speaking the truth. I'm not a liar. I gotta get that recipe. And and Jeff, did it? Did, did the was it creme? Like, did it have texture to the to the creme part of it, or was it just the grits on top? I'm so obsessed with this now. Well, you're just gonna have to come to Florida. Now, okay. you know, it was yeah, funny because I was expecting it to have a really, really terrible texture to it, and it was very smooth, and it had a, a nice sweetness to it because of the corn and and. Uh, oh. Um, you know, they kind of pride themselves on doing Southern style. It's a, there's a great thing going on in Tampa right now where people are making food that is Southern inspired and not sort of Southern cliche. Mm -hmm. And so they're taking all these great seasonal ingredients and playing with the forms. And one of them is the grits creme brulee. It's a perfect example of that. Wow. I love that thing. I love that. All right, guys, this is it. Show is going to be over. Uh, 
Thank you so much once again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Suddenly you're Hitchcock. That's great. I, I, oh my God! I want to be like one day I will come to you and I will ask you a favor, <laughs> and you will. <laughs> Pamela, right. thank you so much yes. for putting up with the wackiness. We appreciate it. Thank you, Pamela. This was great. And thank you for teaching us how to. Um, what? How should I say it? Drop some panties. Hey, you know, that's my lot in life. I'm good with it. <laughs> you guys are awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We will see you next Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Every week we meet in the kitchen, which, you know, it's so funny. Someone brought this up the other day. They said, why aren't any of you guys in your kitchen? I might have to we're not cooking. Week. We're talking, not not cooking. So maybe my, next my week. Wi-Fi is not that great. Yeah, and <laughs> hey guys, next week bring the champagne. Hey Babette, shouldn't you guys make, sing Christmas Carol on guys, your Merry yeah. Christmas to everybody. Woo! <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Well, Hanukkah is over, but ha Happy belated Hanukkah, and uh, may happy your Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. May your 2013 be Hanukkah. twice as sweet as 2012. Merry Quist Christmas, Hanukkah Kwanzaa. That's nice. <laughs> Happy Festivus, everyone. Woo! All the Seinfeld fans will now be removed from the chat. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, guys. Thanks so much. We will see you next Thursday. Bye. Thanks, Pamela. Bye.